Hey guys, Kyle from Blue Collar Customs here. Today I'm here with Alicia from Custom Signals and we're gonna go over the Eagle 3 radar system. This radar device, when compared with even our previous iterations of in-car radar, is essentially a computer compared to a calculator. It really is that much more advanced. The device was actually designed with the majority of the pain points that law enforcement officers face every day. And the features that we built into this device specifically target those issues. The number one issue that we have noted across the board is your fork tests. Uh, most states and most municipalities require any agency using an in-car radar to run a fork test at the beginning and then again at the end of the shift. Traditionally, this was done with a metallic fork that you would have to dig out of your glove compartment, pull out, strike that fork, hold it in front of your front antenna, and then switch out Get a different speed fork, you got a high and a low fork. Once again, front antenna, high fork, low fork. And then you have to take those same two forks to the back, pop that hatch, ring that fork again, get you a high and a low fork on the back. This is a very time consuming process and it can be really difficult if you're working solo, especially if you're in an SUV. And that's primarily because you can't see the counting unit from the back of most of these vehicles unless you pop the hatch. Now, whenever you do that, you could be standing in snow, you could be standing in rain, and it could be extremely inconvenient and uncomfortable. It could also be a safety issue depending on the weather. If a traditional metallic fork is in extremely cold or extremely hot conditions, it can actually ring a different frequency, causing a false fail or a false pass. However, the Eagle 3 has electronic fork tests. In addition to being able to operate with a metallic fork, we've also made the remote control a signal emitter. So what you end up with is a signal emitted from this remote control that's more accurate and more consistent than what you'll get out of a metallic fork. I'm gonna go ahead and prompt for a fork test. This device, whenever it first powers on, it immediately prompts for a fork test, but you can initiate one on your own by pressing this check button. When I press this check button, the device is going to prompt for a front fork, a high and a low, and then it will prompt for a rear fork, a high and a low. Let's get started. It's we're gonna self test right now. That 494, that's the days of certification that are left on this device until it needs to be recertified. And now as you see here, it's prompting for a front low fork. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna, I'm gonna send a front low signal. Now it wants a front high fork. We just successfully ran the front high and low fork on this device and it took us how many seconds? Next is time for a rear fork. All right, so we have performed a front fork test high and low and we're gonna go ahead and get started and take care of our rear fork test high and low. When I send this signal, you're actually going to see this light flash blue. That's confirmation that the signal is being sent. And once it passes, that's going to give you a positive confirmation, which is going to be a green light. This allows you to perform this fork test without having to even see the counting unit. Let's go. So there's your high, it's passed. And let's go for a low fork. Low fork is passed. That fork test is complete. High fork, low fork, front and rear antenna, and that past fork test has been logged within the device, removing the element of human error. There's not a fork to lose, there's not a log to keep track of, and should an agency decide to, they can actually program that device to work only if a fork test has been performed. Another one of the great features built into the Eagle 3 is a situational scan. It's called fan scan. You navigate to this scan within the menu on this device. And essentially what it does is it does the search through the front and the rear antenna, looking at a hundred different channels for anything that's not a Doppler return. It recognizes that this is not a Doppler return and then it throws it out. So think about what that means to you. Once you get yourself posted up to run your enforcement activities, you get your defrost set and what can you expect? Normally, you can expect to see some ghost speeds popping up on this screen. 
but this situational scan, you can run that once you get your HVAC set up how you want it, and it will immediately filter and throw out those sources of interference that you would normally see under normal conditions. Okay, so right now, we're about to run fan scan. You got yourself posted up, you have your HVAC set how you want it, and now you're seeing intermittent speeds popping up from the interference produced by oscillation of the fans within your defrost units. Let's navigate to fan scan. And there it is right there, fan. This is a touch screen, so to make it go, you press up. Right here, this number eight, that's how many sources of interference this device has recognized on the front antenna alone. Once it gets up to 100 on this end, it's going to switch over to the rear antenna and do the same search, seeking out sources of interference that are not Doppler returns. You'll notice there are fewer sources of interference on the rear antenna. Now that might be different if you're running a canine unit because the HVAC units back there run separately and independently from the front, but you'll notice fewer sources of interference. Now, those interference signals are being actively filtered at this point. So as long as we don't change our HVAC, we're filtering out all of those sources of interference. One of the features that we built into this device natively is this K button right down here, and we call it a soft key. It's programmable, but directly out of the factory, it's a GPS pin drop. When you press this button, I just did, I just saved a GPS marker of the coordinates for the location of this device and this vehicle at the time that I pressed that button. This feature is important because if your car does not have in-car video that saves GPS coordinates, this could be helpful for you if you are following behind someone, they pitch something out the window, you need to know where to go back to, find that mysterious bag, find that gun. Rather than having to go back and search a long area, you hit that marker, you know exactly where to go, and you can access the data that's saved on this device on your MDC with a simple USB cable. This button, as I mentioned, is also programmable which is a big favorite because many agencies are already running in-car video that has GPS built in for that particular feature. So, another one of the things that my agencies love to do is make this device go directly to the fan scan by programming that K button to go to fan scan. In order to do that, you just navigate to the menu that's desired and then press and hold the K button positive confirmation with a beep, hit the check mark, and now anytime you hit that key, it's going to take you directly to fan scan so you can get onto the job that much faster. One of the features in this device can, that can be enabled or disabled by an agency using a simple application that again is free is our data logging. Every single time that you lock a speed, information that is saved, if you have the feature turned on, it will save the front or rear antenna indicator, letting you know what antenna the speed was captured on, as well as the mode the device was in, the speed, of course, the time, the date, and the GPS coordinates, as well as your bearing when this occurred. In addition to eliminating the connection to the VSS, we also have no connection whatsoever to your vehicle's OBD2 port. What that means is you have a less complicated installation, and you're actually following your manufacturer's guidelines. Manufacturers discourage anyone from plugging items into the OBD2 port, and so in doing so, you're avoiding any potential danger to your brand new vehicle. So the Eagle 3 is also enabled with multiple color modes, as well as an auto dimming feature. When you have the auto dimming feature enabled, this device will automatically dim as the evening approaches. And then if you start your shift before the sun rises, when the sun comes back up, it'll automatically brighten back up into daytime mode. But let's check out these colors. Right now it's set to a single color scheme, but you can easily go into your menu and change that. Right now we're in single color mode, but let's check out the others. All you need to do is nav navigate to your color menu, which is right here. And remember this device is touchscreen so you can toggle through your different color modes. Right now, this is a two-color mode. 
You can also swap that out for blue. There are other colors available depending on the brightness setting that you have. This is our three color mode. This really is the best mode. Uh, whenever you have this enabled, what you'll see on the screen is all front antenna values are going to show up high and red on the screen. And all rear antenna values are going to show up low and blue on the screen. With this color mode, you will always see your patrol speed in the center in green. And then on the road graphic that actually describes to you visually what mode you are in, you will see your front cars are going to be red, your rear cars are blue and right now because of the mode that we are in we're looking at both front and rear same lane and opposite direction direction traffic on this side of the screen you will see your active speed on this side of the screen you will see your fastest or your locked speed depending on the f feature you have enabled there is another color mode which is our five color mode this mode actually describes your fastest and your lock speeds in different colors as well Eagle 3 is also excellent for your highway operators, and that's because we built in scan mode. What scan mode does is it searches on both the front and the rear antenna at the same time. However, you will never be presented with more than one Doppler tone or more than one speed at the same time. You can enable scan mode by going through the menus, by using the touch screen, or just by simply hitting the scan mode button. With scan mode active, what you'll see here is the word scan and you will see active front and rear. This mode operates just fine in stationary mode or in moving operations. This allows you to have a better feel for what is going on in the traffic around you and it also assists in creating and starting your target tracking history just as soon as possible. The device will defer to the front antenna However, if there is a speed that is detected that's greater than six miles from what is being detected and displayed, it'll flip over to that antenna. Until such time, you put the device in hold or you lock a speed. It will continue to alternate, searching, and flipping back and forth when you have a delta that is greater than six miles per hour. One of the things that Eagle 3 operators notice is how clear and crisp the Doppler tone is compared to previous iterations, even our radar. The Eagle 3 has a superior Doppler tone output that is remarkably and unmistakably better. Our men and women in law enforcement are already faced with so many challenges being on the job. And the last thing that you want to be concerned with is real estate in your view of your vehicle. We addressed that by making the Eagle 3 smaller than any previous radar that we have developed or any other radar on the market. The only way to get any other radar down to the size of the Eagle 3 is to install it with a separation kit, which means more cables, means finding some place to put that counting unit, and more holes to drill. Now that we have covered the features and benefits of our Eagle 3, let's recap. One, real estate in the dash area of your vehicle is at a premium and we have made a smaller device than ever before. Two, you have a less intrusive installation with no connection to the VSS and no connection to your OBD2 sensor. Mind you, vehicles nowadays, many of them don't even have a VSS signal to tap into, so this device is also perfect for your Teslas, your hybrid vehicles, your F-150s. We also have scan mode. We have auto dimming feature. We have data logging. We have electronic fork tests. All these different features were designed with our men and women and law enforcement in mind to make your job easier, make you concentrate less on the equipment and more on the task at hand. I'd like to take a moment to thank Alicia for coming out and going over the features and benefits of the Eagle 3 radar system. For any departments that want a closer look and get their hands on, feel free to reach out and we can bring our demo vehicle out. That way you can experience the Eagle 3 in person.